Hi everyone, welcome to Victoria's Knitting Podcast episode 1. I am Victoria and I am going to be your host today. Yay! So, this is going to be a podcast where I talk about everything I have done in the current month, on the month we are ending, and I plan to follow a pretty basic format like everyone else does, I'm just going to copy what the rest of the people do and I see that works and I like it. So my plan is to show you my finished objects, what I'm currently working on, my acquisitions and at the end probably I will talk about some media recommendations or something else just you can get to know me a little bit better. I don't know. So yeah, that's the plan and let's get started with my finished objects or I should say object because this month I finished only one thing but I am extremely proud of. This is the Sporty Knit Skirt by Handmade by Florence. I always say it's Handmade with Florence but it's by Florence, yes. I say it correctly this time. Um, I only need the skirt. I didn't uh, need the build in shorts because I usually wear like biker shorts underneath skirts. So I didn't thought I would need shorts. And also, I'm not sure if I would like the feeling of wool jorts on my skin so yeah that's the main reason why i decided to do only the skirt i need the skirt on the size 8 for a waist of 90 centimeters and i only use 350 grams of yarn so let's talk about the yarn i work with i work with I have the tag here with the Sami by Man of the Uruguay on the colorway Coal. So this is a 100% superwash merino and each skin, skin, as you know, I don't know how to pronounce that word, comes with 250 met meters of yarn per 100 grams. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but yes, I love this yarn, it's super nice, it's super, I would say, it's quite soft, it is. I'm not saying maybe it's the softest thing I have ever touched, but it's really nice. So, something I did wanted to mention that you probably have noticed, the core of this yarn is like they're variegated i think that's that's the word i'm not sure i forgot how to english um so it's just not one solid color it changes it changes between grays like some are darker some are lighter and in some points it's almost white um i did try to do some helico Knitting, you know, when you go to change the colors from different screens, but it wasn't looking pretty when I was changing the colors, like I couldn't get the hang of it. So I decided to knit just with one ball at the time, and that's the reason why you can see there is a difference in the color from here to here, like this is the point where it changed. I don't bother that much because in real life you can't see it that much. Uh, it's easier to see it on camera. So I don't mind. Um, in an ideal world, I would have been able to do the color changing technique, but I'm learning. And I'm still really happy with the result. 
but if you plan to use this yarn I will well, probably suggest you to, to try col the color changing technique which I'm not going to name because I don't know how to say it but anyways I love it the pattern was super clear um, great I really love Florence patterns this is the second one I make and um, they are super clear super nice um, yes this skirt is worked from here from the top down I thought that when encasing the um, elasticated well the elastic to create the elasticated waistband I was going to struggle a lot but it wasn't that hard I would say it was easy to make it was my first time trying to do that so I will call that a success and the skirt is pretty entertaining to knit because um, you have to, to keep changing between knit and pearl stitches and then you well, at least I, I was, every time I finished a row, I was measuring my skirt to know if I had to do the increases. But it's fun to make. I know that it might seem like a little bit challenging, like in the last rows, because you have so many stitches, but it's, it's not as challenging as I thought it would be. And I was quite surprised when I measured the skirt and the length was the suggested by Florence. That's the one I followed and I really like how it looks on me. Um, but yes, also something I'm going to add because she, in the pattern it doesn't say which method you should use to bind off the skirt. I just use a, the traditional bind off and um, it worked pretty nice i like how it looks so i'm very happy with the skirt um i didn't mention but i did this on gauge so pretty proud of it and yes that was my only finished object for the month of january then I started working on something else, so let's go to my work in progress. Let me rub it here. Um, oh, wait! I want to mention something. Um, with this skirt, I tried for the first time the, the wet joining, when you put your yarn in a glass of water and then you have the ending and the beginning of the yarn and you do that and it worked perfectly i think that's going to be my new preferred method of joining or adding a new ball of yarn well let's continue with my work in progress so to match the skirt i'm planning to make a cardigan or I'm making a cardigan this is the calm down cardigan by Lily Kate Makes this is a really nice cardigan which I did mention in my 2024 plan video this is a saddle show with a saddle it's a cardigan with a saddle shoulder construction sorry I, I just want to say 100 things at the same time and then I just say nonsense um, I did work on the left front piece and so the did only this part of the back because I ran out of yarn I did order some more yarn to one of the little Y so I'm waiting for it I hope it arrived this week but it's taking its time and I am from Uruguay. Why guys? Can't you hurry? Please. I want my yarn. Um but yes, this is only the 50 grams I have left from the skirt because 
the yarn is expensive and I just wanted to see if I like the skirt before committing myself to buying uh, such a quantity of yarn to make this cardigan. But what can I say about this cardigan even though I have worked on it for like just one day? Is that I really like how the pattern is written. I do think that this is the most challenging piece I have done like construction wise um, it has a lot of detail and a lot of I would say peculiarities about how it's work but if you read the instructions carefully um, you can make it at the beginning I was a little bit overwhelmed but like I went step by step without rushing and yes, I did understand what I had to do with this cardigan but just keep in mind that it might not be something for beginners or if you're a beginner who gets scared <laughs> but if you're brave as me, you, you can probably pull this off um, but yes, I'm pretty excited. I hope the yarn arrives in a few days. And yeah, that's everything I have to say about this because it is only the only thing part I have worked on. Um, something that I love about this cardigan is the, the saddle detail which is a uh, one by one brief maybe here you can see it better it's just a dark color so it, and it doesn't show up properly on camera but believe me it has a really one by one it has a really nice one by one ribbon on the shoulders um and yes and the second piece which i am working on that i decided to start because i don't have yarn to make this and I can't sit quietly without doing anything is design a crochet top but I started like today so this is all I have done um let's hope I continue this this is the crochet floral square top by Tenda DIY, it's a free tutorial here on YouTube, um, it's really lovely, I really want to have a top to wear with a, the shirt or yes, a shirt or a button up under it, um, this will look like a vest, a slipover, as you know, I don't know which is the difference between a vest and a slipover, um, and a sweater vest. Not sure which which one is which. I just call them all the same. But anyways, let's get back to this. This is going to be a top. I know you can appreciate anything, but I hope this becomes a top. I usually never finish my crochet projects, or if I finish them, I end up giving them to someone else like probably my cousin because i don't know i don't tell to feel as comfortable with my crochet clothes as i feel with my knitting my knitting ones and to make this the yarn i'm working with is a uh, cotton 100 cotton is the clea number no. five by circula brasil uh, on the colorway of white, 8176. Um, I really like this cotton. I have worked with it plenty of times and I have done a lot of crochet projects. Um, this time, when I got this yarn, I wanted to make a knitted project and it was my first time knitting with cotton. And I didn't like it. It was an unsuccessful project 
which is almost done, which is super sad, and I have it here. Uh, when I grab it, I was like, oh, I am going to tear this apart. I am I going to frog this? And I had to have a pep talk with me so I could convince myself that, yes, this is not looking how I like it. And let me show you my almost finish. Yes, you can see it. My almost finished Lakes Tea by Oseta. The pottery is amazing. Again, I must say that. The, the one who is the one to blame is myself because I decided to make this with cotton and it was like, it's something heavy. Like, this is heavy. This is not something like comfortable and I don't like the, the, the feeling of this. Also, I don't know why, but I feel like every stitch you make with cotton is more noticeable. Not sure if you can see properly, but here is where I pick up the stitches um, from the saddle shoulder and uh, it doesn't look nice. It doesn't look nice. Neither here on the, the, the arm where I pick up the stitches to make the, 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 the sleeve and also I don't know if my attention was off but I have seen other people struggling while knitting with cotton because this is not looking nice I don't like it and it makes me sad because I did spend a lot of time working on this and I took it on vacations with me so I don't know it's, it breaks my heart but I am going to frog it and we'll try to make this crochet top and if I don't like the crochet top I will give it to one of my cousins there is one who I have never gifted anything well like yes none I haven't gifted her like any crochet pieces and I should because I like her she's younger than me so I kind of feel like I need her approval you know it's just once I heard that she told one of my aunts that she thought that I dress really cool and since then whenever I dress I think what will Carolina think about my outfit today because I kind of need that external approval and knowing that somebody who is younger than me and I see as a cool person um, does think that I look cool um, it makes me feel great I think I, I rumble a lot there um, but the point was that if I don't like how this top looks on me I will give it to my cousin but yes, this thing is going to be frogged because it doesn't look nice. My, I mean, if I finish this, I wouldn't be happy. Also, I wouldn't want to give it to somebody else because I know it doesn't look nice. And like, I, if I'm going to give something to somewhere, someone, I want them to have a nice thing, not something ugly and uneven because that looks uneven and regarding acquisitions my only acquisition of this month is the yarn which hasn't arrived so I wanted to show you something that I got last month like for Christmas I gifted to me and I'm super excited because it's like a dream come true it has been on like my bucket list since I started knitting and these are the inter interchangeable needles by Liquid. These are of course pink. That's why I was really in love with them because I'm a girly who loves pink and when I saw these needles for the first time I was like I need them in my life and well I, I got a good deal on 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 a marketplace and 
I got them and I'm super happy because they are really nice. Um, they are wooden. This is my first time working with wood, wooden needles. Um, and they are super lightweight, which is a big difference from my previous needles, which are metal ones. My other set of interchangeable needles, I got it on AliExpress and it was really, really cheap. And I think they are great. I love them. Um, I think I do have a lot of more sizes than the ones I just bought that were like $100. And um, these were like 25, just to let you know. And these are great, the quality is great. I have been working with them for a year, but I just want to have another set. And also one of the cables from these needle sets broke. And like, um, if I just wanted to get one cable online, it would have been super expensive because it was the longest one. So I was like, maybe I can buy one set that is expensive and um, you know just have it with me for a long time um something cool i wanted to mention because i didn't know about it before buying this is that they have a five year warranty so i kept the, the tag and the receipt i got when i bought these ones so, if they broke, maybe. Well, I hope they don't break in the next years. But if they do, I hope it happens before they turn five years. But anyways, this is the only thing I acquired this month. I am super happy with them. They are really nice to, to knit. They are really smooth. Um, they come with quite a few accessories like needle stoppers and are like a bunch of cables well i was i was just grab i think this is one of the shortest ones but they have like one it's like 80 centimeters long which is nice for knitting sweaters because in this set i didn't have one that long anyways i love this set if you are just going to you if you're new to knitting i would recommend getting one of these because you don't need expensive one i decided to get expensive one because i wanted to treat myself and because i know that i'm going to be needing for a lot of years so maybe if you're just new get the cheap one i can't talk about one thing without going to another topic but what i was going to mention is that it comes with some short and some long cables and the only thing I don't like about them is that I don't know if it is because this is a new set and probably when, once I start working with them, the cables are going to untwist themselves. But right now they're all like in a sp spiral and it's quite weird when you are walking because you, your, your work starts to get all twisty as you sit here. Like, what is this? But yes, this is the only thing I can say is just like, I'm like, mm, I prefer my other set in that way. But yes, that was my only acquisition of the month. And now let's talk about the last thing today, which are media recommendations. Yay! So this month, media recommendations are going to be about Percy Jackson. I'm in my Percy Jackson era once again. I read the books for the first time in 2016, so I was around 20 years. I was not like in the demographics, or maybe I was in the demographics when they came out, but I didn't read them. At that moment, I read them later when all the Percy Jackson and all the Heroes of Olympus books were published. I remember loving them. 
and I kept wearing all the other books that came out later, like the Kane Chronicles, Magnus Chase, the Apollo Trials, and well, right now I decided. Well, right now not. When I learned that they were going to make a TV show, I decided I wanted to read the Lightning Tip again. And I saw that in the app from my public library, they had the three first books uh, they are available. So I listened to the audiobooks for those three books. And after that, I was like, well, I should get the, the paper back. Well, I should read the book. Like, and I'm not, I read on a Kindle, so it's not paper. I don't know. Well, I just read them on my ebook, but I was lazy and I didn't want to read the, the, the two that I had remaining for the Percy Jackson series. And then I found a really good podcast, which is called The Last Olympian. And it's about this guy who is reading the Percy Jackson books for the first time. And he is really cool. Like, I really like um, listening to him, he's quite funny, he always has an, another person with him who has already read the books, so it's entertaining, and I listened to the podcast until they got to the fourth book, which is The Battle of the Labyrinth, yes it is, and well, I started to listen to read the books again and listening to the podcast and afterwards, uh, well, this happened this year because I have already read The Battle of the Labyrinth and The Last Olympian, like The Last Olympian I finished it yesterday so, great books, like amazing I think that The Battle of the Labyrinth is my favorite books out of the five that Percy Jackson ones and once I listened to the whole season about The Last Olympian, I'm thinking about starting to read The Heroes of Olympus. I think that the first book in the saga is The Lost Hero. So that's my plan to read. But if you haven't read the Percy Jackson's books, you should read them. They are amazing, even though they are for like kids from 8 to 12, those books a slap, um, amazing. Also, if you have already read the books and you don't want to read them again, but you want to, you know, to remember, to refresh them in your memory, I will totally recommend listening to the podcast. I just mentioned The Last Olympian, it's great. The guy is... I think it's called Mike Shoes. Mike Schubert. Mike Schubert, yeah. I listen every day to the podcast and I still can't remember his last name. Mike Schubert. And he used to have a podcast about Harry Potter, which was called Potterwest. And I know it was quite popular. I never listened to the podcast, but maybe if you did, you can understand who is this guy and how does the show work and yes but now let's discuss another Percy Jackson thing which is very important the TV show which is my opinion about the Percy Jackson TV show I like the show I think I have to a lot not me I have already understood that but a lot of people in the internet need to understand that the that the TV show is made for kids and that I feel like many of the changes that have been done in the TV show are to correct some errors in the book. Um, I would say that, but I enjoy a lot the, the show. Um, I love the actors, like Percy, Anna, Beth and Grover are amazing. I just feel like they are the characters. I mean, I was 
And as I was reading the books again, I just, in my head, those kids were already the characters. Like I had, I, my head erased the previous people I had in my head, like how I had like made them. Um, but yes, I really like the show. I think people should give it a chance. I don't think there are things that could be improved. Yes, probably. I don't think that it's a little bit too like dramatic. And I don't really like that that much. But I think it's a great show. I saw episode seven last week and it was my favorite episode so far. I really want to see what they will do in the next seasons. Um, yes, that's everything I had planned to talk about today. If you stick to the end, thank you. Um, please leave me a comment down below so I can feel like somebody's playing me attention. And if you have watched the Percy Jackson TV show, Please let me know your thoughts about it. Um, and yes, that's it. Let's see each other next month for the podcast. And maybe in some time between, if I decide to upload another video. I have an, one thought, I have one in my head, uh, which I want to upload in February. So I hope I'm able to do it. Um yes, that's everything. Thank you for watching. Adios.